Now, you may be a little bit sore from yesterday's leg workout, but that's, that's completely normal. Just make sure that you stay on top of your nutrition and your supplementation, and you will recover. However, it is going to be completely normal for you to be sore absolutely everywhere over the first few weeks. We're going to be hitting the chest and the triceps. So we're going to be doing this with a dumbbell as opposed to a barbell. Chances are you may not have a spot, so I don't want you to risk going underneath the bar for the first few weeks. So we're going to work on the dumbbells and really utilize your fixators, being your shoulders and uh, your triceps, so you have a little bit more stabilization because you will feel that you're all over the place to begin with. So we're going to begin with a couple of warm-up sets before we work into our three working sets. Okay, so let's begin. So to put these dumbbells back, it can be a little bit awkward. This is what I do. I like to bring them close to my body, hold it tight and slowly lower myself down. Control it with your abs, okay? And then making sure the shoulders and the wrists are in one position, sticking your chest out and pushing up. Sticking your chest out and pushing up. Be careful not to come too close because your arms will collapse. And try not to go out too far because there'll be too much stress placed upon your chest and you won't be able to stabilize the weight. Just think about going directly up above the nipples and then back down. Breathe out on the way up, breathe in on the way down. Now to lift that weight back up, what I like to do, this is me personally, I like to have my arms locked straight. I'll bring my knees up and then slowly lower those weights down. Now, when in doing this exercise, um, make sure that you really stick your chest out and bring your shoulders back. If your shoulders go too far forward, then your shoulders will do more work, okay? Make sure that your shoulders are back so your chest does most of the work. So in between these sets, what I like to do is stretch, and I recommend that you do the same. So I'll show you how to do a chest stretch. So what we're gonna do is put the forearm flat up against a solid surface and then you're gonna twist around until you feel a real good stretch across the pec here. So what that does is really elongate the muscle tissue, improves the elasticity, and making sure that you're always flexible within this area. If you become too tight, you could uh, you know, be a little bit more susceptible to injury. So we hold it for about 15 seconds because it takes around 10 seconds for the muscle to relax and then stretch it out. So 15 second minimum on both sides. Okay, and once we've rested for about 60, 90 seconds, it's time to go again. And again, slowly down. And then press up. Okay, so the count should be about two to three seconds on the way down and one to two seconds on the way up. I really like to explode out of this movement, but as a beginner, just make sure that you control the weight. Nice and slow and steady and continuous. No stop in there and no stop in there. All right, so that's two warm-up sets for me now. I'm probably gonna work, go into the working set, but again, let's make sure that we stretch in between these sets. We're gonna go into the first set of our working sets now. We're doing three in total. So now you need to be selecting a weight where you reach failure. Okay, now when I perform this exercise, you'll notice that sometimes my head is off the bench. Um, this is probably an egotistical thing to say, but I find because my back is thick, it's much more comfortable for me to have my neck straight and aligned with my back. Maybe when I begun training, my head would have been flat on the, on the bench. So if that's more comfortable for you, I suggest that's what you do because that's gonna stabilize your neck that much more. <sighs> because the weights were very heavy then, I decided it was a lot easier for me to throw them on the floor. However, this gym allows that. And I've got rubber weights here and a rubber floor. So you may want to check with your gym if you can do that before throwing it down. That was my second set. So I'm going to go a little bit lighter for the third and final set now. Ooh. Even with that weight, fatigue is really set setting in quick. And this, this can happen. Remember to stay hydrated during this workout as well. You'll notice that I'm wearing some straps. I've broken my wrists and I've got weak wrists, 
But if you find that you're fine without any straps, no problem. If you find that your wrists are a little bit all over the place, you should try to keep them locked at all times. Then maybe some wrist straps will be able to help you. So we finished with this movement now, the dumbbell press. We're going to move on to a fly. So this is what's called a compound movement. A compound movement brings in assisting muscles. Your assisting muscles will be the shoulders and it will, will be the triceps. However, you're trying not to incorporate them. You're trying to just primarily move your pecs, your chest. So the action of the chest is to bring your arm together and then stretch out. Pulls across and then stretches out. Now what we're gonna do is more of an isolation movement. Isolation primary works your pecs, just that little bit more without so much assistance of your triceps or your shoulders. Maybe just a little bit of bicep action in this one. So I'll show you how to perform this second movement now. You will have to go a lot lighter because as I said, we're not using those secondary movements. So with flat flies, it's exactly the same as the flat dumbbell press we just performed. Kind of slowly lower yourself down, bring those weights up, and now your palms are facing towards each other as opposed to down the body. And what you gotta do is, what I say is, pretend you're hugging a fat person. Your arms are coming out slightly and then back up. So your arms do not bend as they were in a press, they're gonna be out slightly, and you're gonna fly out and then back up. Again, sticking your chest out as far as you can, keeping your shoulder blades retracted, you're gonna come up in an explosive movement, slowly down, two to three seconds down, one to two seconds back up. Now you may feel that you'll only need maybe just one warm up on this exercise because your chest is already adequately warmed up from doing the dumbbell bench press. But I do still recommend between every set that you do stretch out these muscles and really stretch out the pecs exactly the same as we did with a dumbbell press. Okay, set number one. So again, make sure that you're mentally focused. Don't get distracted by anybody walking around in a gym and just get straight into the set. Visualize what you've got to do, then all you've got to do is perform it. Oh, oh perfect weight. You'll notice I stop about a fist or two fist distances apart at the top, because I find if you come any closer, then you just rest your pecs, you relax them, you disengage them. We want to keep them engaged the whole time, so that's why as soon as I come to about there, I feel the tension start to release, so that's where I pause and then come back down. Again, let's rest before moving into our second working set. You may notice, and I'm definitely noticing it now, I'm getting a really good pump throughout the chest. So if you're taking, you know, you're pre-caged, obviously that's going to improve the blood flow to the area. And when you actually accentuate that with your movements, if you're doing it correctly, you will feel a pump throughout this, this region. Uh, and even though it's a flat uh, fly in a flat press, which primarily moves the middle portion of your pecs, you will feel it through the bottom and throughout the top, absolutely everywhere. You should feel this area engorging with blood, which is a really good thing because that's gonna transport nutrients to the area to help it perform and help it to recover and grow. Remember, the body's made up of around 70% fluid, so make sure that you're really hydrated in order to allow your pre-workout and allow your workout to work for you. Again, perfect weight there. Got one more set, and what I always say, last set, best set. So I'm gonna really focus on this now, stretch out and be mentally primed and physically primed for the third and final set of this particular exercise. That was a good set. Really put everything into that, every single bit of energy. You should leave everything in the gym and not have any energy to take home with you. So now we've done the middle portion of the pec or the chest. So just try to be conscious now. If I say delts, that means your shoulders. If I say pecs, that means your chest. And triceps is the backs of your arms here. Those are the muscles that we're using within this movement. So now we've worked here, we're gonna work up just underneath the clavicles here, the upper portion of the chest. 
This is a portion that normally gets neglected, so we've got to make sure that we give it adequate attention. And what we're going to do is increase the incline of the bench, so make sure that you find yourself a bench that actually is adjustable and inclines. And we're going to work at around 45 degrees on this chest. So every bench is different, so you may have to ask a trainer or somebody to show you exactly how it does adjust. Adjust, this one's very simple. All I have to do is pull it up like that. And on some benches, you can actually bring this portion up as well to so stop you from sliding out of the seat. Uh, if you don't have this, just make sure that your feet are really planted and stable on the floor so you have a good foundation. Your upper chest is going to be weaker than the middle portion. So we're gonna have to lighten the load. We're warming up anyway. Even though we've done flies and we've done press, we should warm up anyway. So we're gonna actually press now on this incline. You will feel a little bit more of shoulder incorporation, but try to neglect that by bringing your shoulder blades back and sticking your chest out. And I'll show you now during this warm up. So this time, instead of going up above the chest, I'm going up above the head. Wherever the inside of my elbows are gonna be pointing, that's where I'm gonna be working that portion of the chest. So as you can see, it's pointing towards the upper portion of the pecs. So the reason why I'm going straight up like this is because the arms should always be pointing up vertically at all times, whether you're flat, incline, or decline. So I'm coming up, slowly down, pushing up, slowly down, breathing out on the way up, breathing in on the way down. And that's our first warm up. And we go down and back up, exactly the same as we did on the flat. I feel really warm, so I'm gonna go straight into my working set. I'm just gonna rest for about 90 seconds, make sure that I'm mentally primed and prepared for this set, and then we're gonna to try to reach failure again. That was a perfect way to reach failure out. I really struggled there. When you struggle, what you'll find is that your body tries to gain assistance. And by gaining assistance, it'll bring in your secondary muscle groups, namely your shoulders. So what you'll find your body will want to do as a survival mechanism is bring your shoulders forward and they'll round out. Yeah, you'll be a lot stronger doing that because you're bringing in other muscle groups. But remember, we're trying to work our primary muscle group, i.e. our chest. So make sure that you make it hard on yourself. Your body or your chest has no idea what number is on those dumbbells. All it knows is the force and load and failure that you're forcing upon it. Again, perfect. If you've got a spot, then you know, they can help you stabilize the weight. If not, just make sure that you are that much more attentive and focused and in the moment of this exercise. The last thing that you want is an injury. All right, so we've got a 90 seconds rest. I'm gonna stretch out, and then we're gonna do our third and final set. So last set. And you know what we say, this is our best set. I reached absolute failure. We've got one more exercise now for our upper chest, and that's uh, done identical to what we did on the flat, and that was the fly. We've done the press, now we're working to our primary isolator movement of the pecs through the fly. Remember, what we're trying to do is hug a fat person. And I'm gonna perform a warm-up set just to make sure that everything feels okay before I start going into the heavier three working sets. Again, making sure your elbows are up, pointing up nice and high and out to the sides, in line with your shoulders, keeping your chest out, and just bring in the arms and hands until they're about a fist or two fist distances apart. And then back down, get a good stretch out your chest and pretend you're hugging that fat person. Breathe in, breathe out. I feel warmed up and I feel good for my working set, so I'm gonna put these back, stretch out, and then I'm gonna go straight into it. Just make sure that you're always primed for the gym. Make sure that you're hydrated. Your body's made up of 70% fluid. Make sure that you've taken your pre-workout and your supplements are perfect every day, as is your nutrition and your rest. And then you should be absolutely primed and focused for these working sets. Every set, every rep, every workout counts. All I feel like doing when I see these cameras is just doing that, you know? I don't know why. 
I got a lot of built up attitude within me. Ooh, ooh. Yes. Oh, absolutely perfect. Now, just because I look the way I do, don't get worried or um, don't be dis don't be concerned that you're going to pick up weights and you're going to get bulky, especially you women. I always hear it all the time. I don't want to choose weights because I'll be bulky. You're not going to get bulky. It's absolutely fine. And for the guys, you're not going to look like me overnight. So you know, uh, don't be too concerned. What I always tell people is that you're working on a journey to perfect yourself and the weights will do that specific to your needs. You're going to work slowly to perfect yourself and you'll be able to see with the results that you'll be able to track and progress and see in a reflection how it works for you. <sighs> that is just completed for today. Remember, always put your weights back. We finished with chest, but now we've got to realign our focus and now we're going to perform triceps which are the backs of your arms here. So our first exercise is a tricep cable push down. So there's a high pulley cable that you'll be looking for, and I'm gonna show you that right now. However, there's different attachments that you can choose for this. It can be confusing. You have a rope attachment, you have a cambered bar, you have an angled bar, you have a straight bar. And what we're gonna to use today is a straight bar. Okay, so a straight bar is obviously straight. You've got a cambered bar here, and you've got the rope here. All for different things that you'll learn along the way when you do one of my other video trainers. But remember, this is the beginner video trainer. We're doing the basics and working on your foundation first. And this is the perfect one to start with with triceps. So we'll move over to the cable attachment here. As you can see, somebody was using a rope. So what you've got to do is just unhook it from the shackle there and put this one on. Don't worry, I'll put the rope attachment back later. So what we're gonna do then is select a weight to warm up the triceps. Again, trial and error. If in doubt, go lighter. As we get more advanced, you'll hear me say, if in doubt, get, go heavier. So what I like to do is grab hold of the bar, thumb distance apart from the inside here. You're gonna bring it down and make sure your elbows are tucked to your side and they do not move from there. Okay, so you're gonna push down with your arms tucked in and then come up and then back down. So your arms will never come up like this because that will sit, you'll see that your elbows move. Keep them pinned in, keep the tension on your triceps. And you should be focusing and thinking about the backs of your arms doing all the movements here, your triceps. Breathe out and breathe in. Okay, that's our first warm up done. Now your stretch for your tricep is a little bit awkward but I'll show you how to do it anyway, and you should be doing this in between your sets. You're gonna put the arm, your hand in the middle of your back there, you're gonna reach over, grab the elbow, and this is the arm that you're gonna be stretching, and you're gonna pull it down. You should feel the stretch on the back of your arm there. And once we've done that side, we're gonna do the other side. And you should be holding that stretch again, as with all stretches, for at least 15 seconds. Hold it there, static, don't bounce it. So on the larger muscle groups, I recommend around 90 seconds. On your smaller muscle groups, such as your triceps, we'd rest for about 60 seconds, okay? It doesn't need as much rest in between sets before we go again. All right, so those are warm-up sets. My elbows feel warm, and if yours do, Great, let's go into the working set. So I'm gonna go a little bit heavier. Again, trying to find that sweet spot, that weight, that'll allow me to reach absolute muscular failure. That was a little bit light for me. So I'm gonna go a bit heavier on my second set. So what you may find the body involuntary trying to do is this. It kind of crunches over to make that exercise easier. I'm probably exaggerating it a little bit just so you can see how your muscles normally react. Again, you've got to fight against that and make it harder on your triceps and not on the rest of your body. Oh, That's a good working set. So I'm gonna leave it that weight for my third and final set of this exercise. As a reminder, always stay hydrated. Keep drinking in between your sets. Not so much that you're completely bloated, but that's why I like to just have a little bit of coconut water powder in my in my in cage, just to make sure that I'm hydrated during my workout. <sighs> 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 
So I was able to squeeze out just one more rep there. So I'm really happy with that. Sometimes that you'll see my thumbs go over the top. That's something I don't recommend as a beginner. Make sure that you really grasp the bar and put your thumbs underneath as well. So whenever you're grabbing a bar, always wrap your thumb around it too. Right, we finished with that exercise. We've got a second tricep movement now, and that's going to be overhead extensions. So I'm going to show you how to perform that one now. Our second tricep movement is going to be overhead cable extensions. There's various ways of doing the overhead, like you can do it with a dumbbell, you can do it with a bar, but because you're a beginner, I don't want you to hurt yourself and drop a dumbbell or a barbell on your head. So that's why we're going to go to the machine until you're, you've really got the education to the muscles to assist yourself through those free weight movements. So we've done the outer portion of our tricep, that head there. Now we're going to work on the inner head. And how that works is by stretching your arms back overhead. What we're going to do is lean up against the same machine that we just used. We're going to bend over. I like to push my butt up against the bar. If you've got a bar there, you may not have. And then I'll bend over. And again, I'll just keep my elbows pointing in, not out. And I'll extend back and then forward. About one, two to seconds there, forward, and then two to three seconds back. One, two, two to three. You'll notice that my elbows keep in one place. They do not move back or forward. They keep pinned and locked. So the only part of my arms that are moving are my forearms. Okay, that's our warm-up set done. I feel warmed up before going on to my working set. Again, if you feel like you need a second or even a third warm-up, uh, set, then you can do that. I'm going to go straight into mine, not until I've stretched out my triceps first, though. Oh. Oh. Perfect. Just as a reminder, you're going to be holding the bar here. Again, thumb distance apart on either side as you extend out. So this is our second working set now. I'm going to show you how to stand on this exercise if you haven't got a bar here. So you're going to lean forward slightly, put all your weight onto your front and rear foot, and keep your back completely stab stable so you don't come up and then down. Just bend right over, keep your elbows locked in one position, and just moving your forearms forward and now it's really starting to burn. So this is where I'm really going to start to focus and get through those hard repetitions. That was good. I got one more set to really hammer this home. My last set was my best set. So try, meaning three, there are three heads to the tricep. So it makes sense for us to work all three heads, but we have to hit it with three different movements in order to attack each one of them. The next one is more of a compound because we will bring in a little bit of assistance, mainly from, I'd say, the lower pecs, and we're going to do that on bench dips. Our third and final exercise, bench dips, tricep bench dips. There's a couple of variations that we can do here to make it easier or harder. I'm going to go the harder route, but I'm going to demonstrate the easier route for you first as we do this in our warm-up. So make sure that your palms are either side of your butt there. You're going to bring yourself out until your legs are at a right angle there, okay? Your calves and your hamstrings are at a right angle. You're going to come down and then back up, making sure that your back is always very close to the bench, so it should never drift out like this, as you see so many people do. That's wrong. Make sure that you go down vertically and back up. Now, to make it harder, what you're going to do is bring another bench out in front of you of the same height, and you're going to raise your ankles or your feet onto that bench. So what that does is take the weight away from your legs and places more on your upper body. And obviously, the stabilizers of your upper body are going to be your triceps. If this is too hard for you to reach that failure point, then go the easier route to begin with. So let's get into this first set. Slowly down, pushing up. So 
Two to three seconds down. One to two on the way up. Oh, wow, that was tough. So let's take the 60 seconds rest because it's a smaller muscle group and stretch out the triceps. Oh, I reached failure with my feet elevated. So I put my feet down on the floor and put out another four reps here. Whatever you can do to reach that failure point, the better. So over the coming weeks, we will be increasing the weight and bringing down the repetitions. So, you know, hopefully you'll still be able to get that mind-muscle connection. You'll be able to get the focus and the pump and the contraction and the fatigue throughout the muscles as we lower the repetitions as well. Too much talking now. Let's get into the third and final set. Oh. Oh. All right, chest and triceps completely done. We've obliterated them. So I'm gonna take my re-cage now, and so should you. That's our post-workout protein to ensure that we're fully recovered. So make sure that you have your protein shake now, and then uh, make sure that your food is completely 110% and you're fully hydrated. 